All right. So, Sana, we discussed about series and parallel, isn't it? So, um, and, uh, we have also found out what what do you mean by uh, the effective resistance when we have two resistances in series, and we have seen that the way to compute the effective resistance is R effective is equal to, what is that, can you tell me? In a series circuit? Uh, you want the formula of series? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think it's R1 plus R2. Yeah, don't forget that. Series means R effective is going to be equal to R1 plus R2. And in parallel, we have seen that The, the combination of these two resistances, what is it going to be? Um, 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Yeah, so it's going to be R effective or R equivalent, whatever they, you want to call it. 1 by R effective is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Okay, these are the two formulae, and we did some simple numericals around this. Okay, so. Uh, what will happen? A little bit about the functional aspect of series and parallel connection. Okay, so supposing this resistance, a bulb is nothing but uh, a resistance. Okay, another bulb. I am drawing this one, two resistance in series in this way. Okay. I will also do one thing. I will add the, um, I will add a switch in between. Okay, so uh, if I, this is called open condition. You are aware of this, right? In open condition, will the lamps glow? No, oh, sir. No, in the open condition, the lamps will not glow. If I close this, in the closed condition, do you think the lamps will glow? Yes. Okay, so if I close it, then both the lamps will glow. Okay, uh, if it is in the closed condition. That means whatever uh, electrons are there, they have a path and they can flow through the circuit when this key is closed, okay? This is one thing. Now, if you have a small break in the circuit for some reason, let's say that wire broke off, simple reason, some, something happened and the wire broke off, right? This is called, this is bulb A, this is bulb B, okay? and the circuit is in closed condition. Can you tell me whether A will glow? Um, no, if sir, A won't glow. B will glow? No. Or both A and B will not glow? Yeah, both won't glow. Both A and B not glow? This is correct because when you have a break, it doesn't matter if the electrons are able to come only to a part of the circuit. Okay, they are not able to complete the circuit. If they're not able to complete the circuit, then this will not glow, okay? This is one. The second thing which I want to ask you is, assume that there is no break in the circuit. And the key is closed. Okay. And bulb B is there, no? The bulb B's filament has got uh, blown. B's filament is blown. Okay. Now, what do you think? Will bulb A glow, bulb B glow, or bulb A and B both won't glow? I think A will glow because it's the direction of current is moving like this. Yeah. So first it goes to A, but then it can't go to B because it, the filament is blown. So A will light up, but B won't. B won't, okay. That's what you feel, but actually what, what is the meaning of B's filament is blown, no? That means there is no path 
from here through B till across the B, right? That means, see, uh, when you say electricity is passing through B, it means like this. The electrons can come like this, go through the filament, and go to the this wire, isn't it? So when B is blown, that means this part is broken. Okay, it's the same thing as this one. So whether the wire has got damaged or the filament is blown, right? The net effect is both A and B will not work. That means current is not going to pass through the circuit. Is it okay, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. So when you when you talk about filament gone, it means that this is the path for the current to come to go through the filament and then go. Okay. So this is this is this is the this is the actual bulb. This is how the bulb is. So if this filament is blown, it's as if the circuit has become open. Is it okay? The circuit is not closed, it's as if the circuit has become open. So that is, in a sense, the, that is the problem with the series circuit, because if you're having both these bulb in series, any one defective bulb, okay, this bulb is proper, but this bulb also will not grow, okay? That is the disadvantage of the series circuit. I will follow this, uh, Sana. Yes, yeah, so, so basically uh, A and B won't glow because uh, when B's filament is blown, it's the, so B, uh, so the point uh, between where the light bulb starts and light bulb stops doesn't work. So it needs a base for the current to pass through. So it is that because, so because of that, A also won't glow? Yes, okay. yeah. So but if B, B is broken, means that filament is broken, right? The filament is broken is as if it's as good as the wire is broken. Means this is, this is the path. The path through the bulb is through its filament. You're able to so, understand, right? Yeah, so there's no path for the current to flow. Yes, so whether the, if the, the key is open, okay? The key is open is as good as the wire is broken is as good as the fuse, the filament is blown. Blown filament, all these three are one and the same. They are, circuit is not completed. Okay. Understood, no? If one bulb is damaged, none of the, none of the, you can have any other resistance, you can have a fan, whatever it is, none of those elements will work. Okay. For example, if you have this, uh, the decorative lights, the LED lights that they say, no, which we put for Diwali, Christmas and all that. That also is very frustrating. One bulb fuses out, one place there is a, a break, no? The entire thing will go for a toss, okay? Yeah, I know, it's very annoying. Okay, so that is one of the disadvantages of a series circuit, okay? Have you made a note of this, dear? Yes, I have. All right. Now comes uh, talking about the parallel circuit. Okay, so I will draw the simple parallel circuit and instead of the resistance, I am now going to replace it with a bulb, okay? And of course we have that, uh, we have to put the key also.
Okay. Now look at this. I'm going to. Uh, I will give you time to make a note of it. Case one is let us. Uh, if it is open, that means current is not going to pass through the circuit. It is. It will not flow through. This is path number one. Neither will it flow through path number two because if it is open means uh, both A and B is going to be off. Correct, no? Yes, sir. A off, B also is off. Now what I'm going to do in case two, I'm going to close the switch. There I closed it. When I close it, then current will flow through um, both. It will flow the main circuit. Yes, sir. And it will also subdivide in both the paths and it will flow in uh, path number one and path number two as well, okay? But bear in mind, like we did yesterday, whatever current is going through this, right? This current will split based on what is the resistance here that we will see a little later, okay? If they are equal, half and half, then current will split equally. But if these resistances are not equal, then current will also be different. Current will not uh, split evenly, okay? But when uh, key is closed, A is also on and B is also on, okay? Now we'll go to case three. This uh, key is closed, okay? Assume that this particular path is broken now. Can you tell me what your observations will be? What your findings will be? What do you expect? So the current, the current will, because it's closed, the current will pass through the full circuit and it will uh -huh. subdivide. But it, if when it does subdivide, it will pass through the, it will pass through A and A will glow, but B won't glow because it's, uh, because it's broken and yeah. a will glow because it's a different uh it's a different... isn't it see yeah. actually what we need to do is we need to see hey electrons are flowing is there a path for the traffic to move okay basically that right it's that the cars are coming from this side electrons are moving right then if both the roads are available, they will split. Now they say this is like a roadblock. People have put the sign. This break is there, no? This break means this is road is closed. Doesn't matter. This path is there. Okay. So the electrons can move and they can close the circuit. They can flow through the circuit. Okay. Some complete path should be available. So as you rightly uh, inferred here, A will be on, but B will be off. Okay. And another thing to bear in mind, uh, Sana, okay. Here, actual electrons are going to move in this direction here. Okay. okay. But this is, this is the direction of electron which will move in the circuit. But they, uh, conventionally, what we say is current is flowing in this direction. So why do we say that? So that's like a convention in uh, electricity, okay? So they say direction of current. This is a very important thing for you to remember. Direction of current in the circuit is opposite the direction of flow of electrons. Make this important note. Yes, I done. Okay, actually electrons are going to go from, this is the shorter end is the negative end. The longer end is the positive end. Okay, so the electrons are going to go from the negative terminal, the negative end through the circuit and reach the positive end. That is the actual flow of electrons in the wire. These are the free electrons. But conventionally, what we say is, we say that current is flowing from the positive end to the negative end. Okay, very important for you to remember that the direction of current 
is always opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. Okay. So, can you confirm to me if you have made a note of this circuit diagram? I have. I have. And all these three things, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Another thing for you to remember is, right? If this guy is broken, right? If, if, this, if this guy is not broken, okay? Then if both these resistances were same, so I'm looking at uh, B not broken, and I'm looking at a simple case where resistance A and B are same. Okay, then what would happen is, as I mentioned to you, because both the resistances are the same, the current will equally split in path one and path two, isn't it? That means you will expect in A, one ampere will flow and you will expect in B, one, one ampere. ampere will flow because resistances are both the same, okay? But if this path B is broken, no? then this resistance will not come into account because this path is not there. If you are going to calculate current, okay, what you will say is I is equal to V divided by R effective. This is what you do now. But yeah. in the broken thing, this V is not coming into picture at all. Isn't it? It's as if that resistance is not figuring out in the circuit itself. That means current will be simply V divided by resistance A. So, so if B is broken, then we only have to take the resistance of A into consideration. A, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, and the current may change. This 2 amperes value will change. Because if it is not broken, R effective will be 1 by R1, 1 by RA plus 1 by RB. But if by chance it is broken, then that resistance is not coming into play at all. Okay, that means I will, it's as if that this circuit has become, it's as if it has become a simple circuit with only resistance A now. The, this, this limb, this whole limb is not, not at all there. That means it's just a simple circuit with resistance A in the picture. Okay, so Am I able to understand this? Yeah. Huh? This is like a hot question in IG, no? You have to prep you for everything. Okay, what if they, they say that this is there and then I ask you to calculate the current in one. Just because you see two resistances here, you should not immediately jump and take both of them. You should yeah. know that uh, because it is broken, B is not there in the picture and this in effect is only a simple single resistance in the circuit. Is it okay? Yes. Sir. All right. So parallel connection is preferred because of this, because just because B is blown, a, uh, it's, it's not required that A also be defective, right? So A will work. So parallel, in fact, in your room, whatever uh, uh, implements are working, right? The fan, all of these guys are connected in parallel. Okay, in your room, when you have the light, fan, AC, all that stuff, right? They're all connected in parallel. If one is defective, the others will continue to work. Okay. In your, in one's room, okay? All the electrical instruments, electrical devices, uh, instruments, I should not say instruments, you should say devices, are connected in parallel. So, but uh, say hypothetically a light is connected in series, uh -huh. Then how fast will it blow if it how does? fast will it blow? No, how fast will it blow off? Like it won't work. Uh, uh, can you please repeat the question, Ma? Yeah. Um, so the hypothetically, the light bulb is not connected in parallel, but it's connected in series. Okay. So here I am uh, drawing the light bulb for you. One or yeah. two? One. You want only one? Okay, no, two, two, two. You want two. Okay. Yeah. Um, so because this is in series and this is a light bulb, um, how how fast will one of them cut off if it does? How fast will one of them cut off means what? Like one of them, one of the filament gets blown or something like that. Okay. How fast means what? You are asking me, will A continue to glow? Or, no, no, uh, no. 
Uh. No, I'm asking if uh, because okay, A and B are connected, right? Yes. So hypothetically, if B is blown, uh. how fast will it blow? Like, I, I don't know how to explain the question. Uh, basically, I wanted to know how 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 much more effective is parallel than series. And how much oh. more time does parallel work for that? Okay, series? so what you're saying is, um, when you when I say blown, right? I'm 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 not I'm not telling you that because you put in series B is gone. Yeah, yeah, I know. What, no, yeah, I know what you mean. Huh. I'm asking is uh, I'm asking how much time an approximate is a series going to last. So that, that series lasting, parallel lasting has got nothing to do. The life of the bulb, okay? Okay. Life of bulb has got nothing to do with type of connection. Okay, so yeah, that was my question. Nothing to do with, it's not that uh, if for longevity of the bulb, if you connect it in series, it will be, you know, less longevity than parallel, nothing like that, okay? Of course, right, the, when A and B are connected in series, right? Supposing A has to, you know, burn with a certain intensity, okay? That's what is called rating. Rating means uh, they will say, hey, this is a 40 watt, 220 volt bulb. Okay, that means uh, you expect you close your eyes, 40 watt bulb means you say, ah, reasonably strong. Uh, a 10 by 10 room will be well lit. That is the intensity you are expecting. Okay, and then like that, you have two 40 watt bulb. Okay, 220 volt. The important thing is. If A has to work, A has to be supplied with uh, 40 volts for it to work effectively. Okay. If B has to work, B has to have 40 volts across it to work effectively. Okay. The reason why I'm saying is, if you are not giving the proper voltage, for example, here you're giving only 60 volts. Or, or you're giving some 50 volts. Then what is happening in the series connection? This is something which I have to talk to you about slowly. Let's not try to get fast here. Supposing I have a resistance R1, I have another resistance R2, okay? and I'm giving some voltage. For now, I will uh, take some 40 volts. Is it okay? It's like 10, uh, 10 of your, whatever, some 10 batteries are joined together, it is giving you 40 volts, okay? What is going to happen is, this resistance will drop voltage across it. I will I'll try to explain what I mean here, okay? Supposing you are climbing a series of steps. Okay, you have to go from here. here. There's a small boy. He has to go from here. He has to climb the series of steps and he has to reach here. Okay. And assume that this boy is fully tired. He has zero energy now. Able to imagine this? Totally zero energy. Only when he drinks something, let's say he has, he needs to have horlicks, okay? He has one cup of horlicks, one glass of horlicks. Then he can climb from here, he can reach here. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Now he starts off, he has a cup of horlicks. He starts off, he reaches this point. He is now somewhere here. The fact that he has climbed from here to here, right? He is a little tired, isn't it? That means his energy has dropped a bit. Can you imagine this? Yes. Uh, you, you're tired now halfway, if you don't have food regularly, halfway through the day, you're tired. Halfway through the dust, this fellow is tired. So that means his energy is dropping. So whenever this R1 is nothing but, this R1 is equivalent to 
this much series of steps okay that means some energy is getting dissipated because you are crossing the steps the similar way when the electrons have to pass through this resistance some amount of their uh, energy is lost i able to understand this ma the yes. ball is nothing but the electron think okay. of it like that the ball is nothing but the electron the battery is the one which is giving it the charge right so yes. the moment the electron has uh, uh, traveled through a resistance its energy is dropping okay so that drop can be measured as a voltage drop here i want to understand for okay. example as soon as he is had a cup of horlicks his he is a uh, let's say he is capable of doing 100 joules of he has 100 joules of energy okay then he does climbing he climb 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 he comes here and he spends off 40 joules of energy he spent off right now he has only 60 joules of energy left i able to understand this so yeah. that is like what whatever drop has happened no that drop is what is written here 40 okay here 60 hmm? it has to be 100 there 100 okay. joules of this thing is there he climbed some steps he lost 40 remaining uh, steps he climbed he will lose 60 and then he comes back here i able to understand so yes. this, this thing is called uh, uh, so this is like the okay so if, because i am talking about electrons the correct thing is this is like ground zero here before the steps come into picture so at this point they will be at cert certain potential and then after crossing the steps the potential drops they will be at a different potential okay and that difference in potential is measured by the volt meter okay so you say what does volt meter do volt meter is going to me measure the voltage between two points volt meter measures the voltage between two points is it okay and uh, when whenever uh, whenever we have a resistance in a circuit okay i'll write it down here just give me a minute whenever we have a resistance in a circuit there is a voltage drop across it voltage drop across it means it's nothing negative it's just that 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 much of energy is consumed by the resistor isn't it so that resistor is consuming the energy and it is going to glow isn't it it's like the resistor is telling hey electron you are all jumping you are jumping so much with energy you give part of it to me okay i will use your energy and i will glow and as soon as you go uh, as soon as you are uh, crossing me you are a little less you are spent means your energy has come down a bit okay and that it is going to get consumed across the next series of steps that means the energy that is there within the electrons is being used by your bulb by your fan in order to do its work you are able to understand that right because what what is the resistance do like a bulb or a fan right they consume the electrical energy and they do the work like a resistance is going to become red hot geyser and you know it is going to make the water warm a uh, filament is going to become orange and it is going to light up the room a fan is going to convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy it is going to rotate and give us air 
okay all this is resistance okay converting energy which is available in the electrons electrical energy resistance is converting the electrical energy and doing some meaningful work you are able to follow okay that means uh, they are they are consuming some potential of the electron and uh, that potential drop is what we measure between the points across the resistor okay this is like a simple example i don't want to get too technical i don't want to go v is equal to w by q and all that stuff and tell you here this is a very simple way in which i can introduce potential drop in the ninth grade for you is it okay yes all right now <clears throat> in a series circuit this also you should know in a series circuit if you have some potential here it is going to be distributed across all the resistances not equally of course okay if i have r1 r2 r3 and this is b assume that there is some drop across r1 there is some drop across r2 there is some drop across r3 i will call this as v1 v2 and v3 okay this v is going to be always equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 okay in a series circuit yes I okay that means it, it, the v1 v2 v3 will not be equal they will be dependent on the value of resistances r1 r2 r3 right but the thing is that it they are all the v will be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 can you wait for a second to copy it down Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Now, when you come to a parallel circuit, right? okay i'll call this fellow as r1 r2 and r3 you know uh, to explain the initial stage let me not confuse you with this fellow i will just put r1 and r2 later on we can move to having r3 also okay do you agree that r1 and r2 are in parallel okay so if this is the potential v the beauty of this uh, parallel circuit is if i measure the voltage across r1 and if i measure the voltage across r2 can you tell me what you expect v1 and v2 so v1 and v2 will be divided equally so v will be divided equally amongst v1 and v2 okay that is where the depending on the resistance that is the misconception okay irrespective of the values of r1 and r2 let them be whatever they are okay 
voltage drop across R1 and voltage drop across R2 will be the same. That is V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V. Okay, so hypothetically V is six, then V1 and V2 will also be six. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that is, they will, they will be the same. Whatever is the uh, voltage here, that same voltage will be between these two points. This is point A, this is point B. That same voltage will be here and that same voltage is going to be here as well as here. Okay, that means if this is like 120 volts, right? V1 also will be 120. V2 also will be 120. V1 will be equal to V2 is equal to V. Okay, sir. This is, these are two things which you should bear in mind um, when we talk about voltage drop, okay? You can... Okay, so if you look at it, uh, a few minutes back we discussed, right? When we are connecting uh, these resistances in series, right? Uh, if you want each of these resistance to deliver the required heat or work, because we, we, we saw yesterday the formula for heat is equal to, H is equal to I square RT. You remember we did this? Yeah. Huh? That, that means each of, heat means basically work. Heat means um, because all these resistances, what are they doing? They are converting electrical energy into work. That work can be uh, heat, that work can be uh, a fan moving, that work can be a light glowing, it doesn't matter, okay? Everything in electricity is called heat. Okay, just make a note of that. Because it seems H is equal to I square RT. That is a one formula that is available. Irrespective of the kind of resistance, R1 may be a lamp. R2 may be a fan. Everything is view, viewed as a resistance in electricity. R3 may be an AC, air conditioner. Okay, so when current passes through them, lamp R1 is going to do work. Do work means give out heat. Fan R2 is going to do work, rotate, is going to give out heat. Okay, and AC is going to keep the room cool. That means that is also doing work. That is also going to give out heat. Everything is termed as heat able to understand and the formula for that is h is equal to i square rt what is the current flowing through that you have to find out i and for how much time you want to calculate because a bulb uh, or a geyser working for one minute uh, versus working for one hour the amount of heat it will consume is different so heat is going to be de dependent on the time also this is a very important thing for you to understand Okay. And another thing is H is equal to I square RT. Just look at it. H by T is equal to I square R. And what is this H by T? H is, can you tell me the units of H? Of heat? Heat. Uh, what is the unit of heat? Not sure. Joule. Okay. Okay, heat, work, everything is joule, okay? And H by T means joule per second. Do you know what is the unit joule per second? No, sir. What? Okay. And do you know what joule per second, this uh, unit what, what is that going to represent? 
Probably energy. Energy, no. sure. energy is heat. Heat and energy are one and the same. That heat per time is the rate of energy. It's called power. Power is nothing but uh, the rate at which the energy is being dissipated. Or H by T is power. Uh, you said power is the rate at which energy is being? Yes, power is the rate of energy. Or you can say energy per second. Okay. Got so because we want to distinguish, distinguish, distinguish it like this. See, I can have a bulb. I call it as forty watt. 220 volt bulb and I have another bulb which is uh, 20 watt 220 volt bulb okay so this is bulb number one this is bulb number two if I say um, which bulb will consume more energy, what will be your answer? So the first one. The first one is the answer, but I have not told you what is the duration that, that this bulb is being kept on, isn't it? Yeah. So which bulb will consume more energy Okay, is like an incomplete question because here I have not given you the element of time, isn't it? Because I'm asking you to calculate the heat for bulb one and you know H is equal to I square R into time T. When you gave the answer, you assume that both the bulbs are switched on for the same time duration, isn't it? But it is possible that I switch on the 40 watt bulb only for one hour and this 20 watt bulb is kept switched on for six hours or longer time. So this fellow actually is giving out more heat. You're able to understand, no? That is what is called, uh, that is the difference between power and heat. Heat is dependent on time. How much time you're keeping your geyser on? How much time you're keeping your light bulb on? Okay. Whereas if I talk to you about power, which bulb is going to consume more power? What is your answer? Uh, so it depends on the time again, but if it's one hour and six hours, then it would be the second one. So if you look at the definition of power, power is heat per time. Okay, the definition of power is energy per second. Isn't it? So power brings in the common factor, one second. I will understand. So what will be your answer? Which one is going to consume more power? First one. First one, because it is 40 watt. 40 watts means what? 40 watt means I am going to consume 40 joules of energy every second. That is what a 40 watt bulb means. Please make a note of this carefully. When I say a 40 volt, when I say a bulb is rated at 40 watt to 220 volt, what I'm saying is, yeah, you switch me on, then I'm going to consume 40 joules of energy, okay? Every second, you keep me on for two seconds, I will consume 60 joules of energy. If you keep me on for three seconds, uh, sorry, uh, two seconds is 80. If you keep me on for three seconds, 40 into three, I will consume 120 joules of energy. But every second, I'm going to consume 40 joules. 
Yeah. I have to understand that. Yes. Now, what do you mean by 20 watt to 20 volt? 20 watt means this bulb is saying I am going to consume 20 joules of energy every second. Consume and give away. When you say consume means it's going to gobble up that much and convert it into light or heat, isn't it? Here consumption means conversion, conversion of electrical energy into uh, what do you call uh, mechanical or light or heat or whatever. I will understand. So power means power means it is built in. It is per second. Okay. Whereas when you talk about just heat, just energy, that depends on the time. Okay. You got it, no? All right. And one more thing to bear in mind is what is the need for mentioning 40 watt, 220 volt? What do you what is the need for you to mention 20 watt, 220 volt? Okay. That is what is called rating. Please be very, very careful in this. Try to understand this. Okay. What we are saying here is we are telling this bulb, I am designing it. Okay. And this bulb has to work effectively. That is the job. But you please don't connect this bulb to a voltage source which is lower than that or which is higher than that. Don't do that. That's what these fellows are telling. When the manufacturer is telling 20 watt, 220 volt, he's telling you, you stupid fellow, connect this bulb only to a 220 volt source. Then it is going to give you the desired output of 20 watt or 20 joules every second. If you connect it to higher source, let's say you're by mistake, you're putting it to 440 volt, then the bulb will fuse. It is not designed to work under 440 volt because more current will go. Its resistance is fixed. Its resistance is fixed. If you increase the voltage, more current will flow and the thing might blow off, isn't it? So when you're telling rated, rated means please, please connect me to this voltage. That's what the manufacturer is telling you. Okay, and when you connect me across the right voltage, I'm going to give you the desired uh, uh, power that you want, which is nothing but 20 watt. Yes. Sir. Okay, another question is, hey, is it possible for me to make a 20 watt, 220 volt bulb glow when you compare it, connect it to, let's say 100, 120 voltage source? So then won't the desired result be only 10 watts? Sorry, come again. If you connect it, if, if the 220 volt uh, bulb is connected to 120 volts, then mm. will the output of the watts be 10? Yeah. Or will it just less. not come? Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be as per specification. Okay. It will not give you, it's not that it will not work. It may work, but it will be dim. Okay. Okay, that it is not going to give you the promised output. Okay, and of course, you can't put it at 440 because the resistance inside is not designed to withstand it. Yes. Isn't it? It will blow. Low voltage, it may not blow, but it will not give you the desired output. You are following this, no? Yes, I got it. So this is what is called the rating. Rating on an electrical uh, device. Okay. It is the manufacturer's way of telling us. It will be written on the bulb. Okay. Here, 60 watt, 220 watt, it will be etched on that. Okay. So we don't kind of goof up. Okay. Let's take a few minutes and summarize what we have learned so far because a lot of details I'm giving. You also seem to be absorbing it very quickly. So can we discuss slowly what are the points that we discussed till now? Yeah, okay. Um, so we did in, in, a, so in a CD circuit, mm -hmm. if one uh, resistance is, uh, okay, if one wire is cut, then the whole circuit won't work. But in a parallel circuit, if one of the connections is cut off, then it will still work because it goes through a different uh, 
Yeah. Can so I basically, you, we have like disadvantage of a series circuit, advantage of parallel circuit. That's what we discussed first thing. Yeah. And what else did we discuss? Then we then we discussed the if yeah that we did, mm -hmm. and then we did uh, the direction of current goes. So electrons move towards the right, but okay, no. Electrons move or uh, always move in the opposite direction of the flow of current. So I will say conventional current. Yeah. Versus electron direction, electron movement. Yeah. Okay, we said that electrons will move from negative to positive. You can make a note. Electrons will always move from negative terminal to positive terminal but the direction of current is always from positive terminal to negative terminal. It's always opposite to the flow of electrons. And that positive terminal is the lumbar danda. Yeah. This long fellow is positive and this short fellow is negative. That is also a convention. These are all accepted conventions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then what else did we discuss? Then uh, the life of a bulb has nothing to do with the kind of connection. Then uh, we discuss the voltmeter. That's the is... doubt which you asked, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then the voltmeter is uh, the voltage between two points. Okay. What is a voltmeter? Okay. We said that voltmeter is an instrument that me measures the potential drop across a resistance. Can I hear you say that these exact term words? Uh, a voltmeter is an electrical instrument that is used to measure, find out the potential, measure, used to measure the potential drop between two. You can say between two points. Okay. You can say between two points or you can say across a resistance. Across resistance, resistances, doesn't matter. See, when you say PD, no, sometimes people say potential difference. Sometimes people say potential drop. Both are one and the same. Okay, it's like the electrons at point A before it is going through the resistance. No, it's all jumpy, full of energy. And by the time they cross over the resistance, the electrons have spent some of their energy. So they are at 100 joules now. And after crossing the hurdle, they are at, let's say, 60 joules. That means this resistance has consumed 60, uh, 100 minus 60, 40. 40, uh, what do you call it? 40 energy has been dropped. 40, actually it is 40 joules per coulomb. That's all. Okay. One coulomb charge, Okay, if one coulomb charge is going across the resistances, okay, 40 joules per coulomb is nothing but 40 volt. Joule per coulomb is actually volt. One second. Joule per coulomb is nothing but volt. Okay. Okay, so this is what is we discussed about that thing called potential drop. One other thing you should mention is, see, how to connect the instruments. If supposing you have an ammeter, no? We say ammeter is always connected in series to the circuit. This so, is uh, what is an ammeter used for? It is used for measuring the current here. Okay. So let us put that also. What is an ammeter? It is used to measure the current. Means just like a, a, a water flow meter, you can say. Water flow meter means it is telling uh, how much volume of water is going through me. This is the instrument. Okay, how much water it's telling uh, uh, one liter went through me, two liters went through me, three liters went through me, like that. This water flow meter is measuring the rate of flow of water. Like that, what the ammeter does is, ammeter is keeping track of the electrons that are moving, okay, across it in a given time, okay. So basically, it is measuring the rate of flow of charge. 
Amitir is measuring rate of flow of charge or Amitir is measuring current flow. Yes, sir. Okay, and the way the ammeter is connected, it's always connected in series. The way an ammeter is connected, it is always connected in series. Okay, but you see the way the voltmeter is connected from here to here. You take these two points, you take it parallel, and then you put the voltmeter. Voltmeter, you will never connect it like this. This is wrong. Okay, so whatever, wherever you want, you, you take a circuit, one resistance here, second resistance here, third resistance here, you want to find the uh, voltage, potential difference between this point and this point, let's say any two points, then from here to here, you take the endpoints, you take the wire, from here, you take the wire, and then you connect it to the two ends of a voltmeter. So this kind of a connection is called a parallel connection. Okay, a voltmeter is always connected in parallel and an ammeter is always connected in series. Is it okay? So voltmeter is parallel and uh, ammeter is series, right? Yeah. What else did we discuss? Uh, we discussed that heat is um, I square into R into T. Heat, we discussed heat is H is equal to I square R T. Okay, this is, uh, yeah. say what is the work done? How much, uh, how much did that electrical instrument consume? Okay, so they can ask the question about how much work was done work done by the instrument or they can say how much is the energy consumed energy and work are used interchangeably both of them work energy are measured in joule and they are given by the formula h is equal to i square rt they are dependent on the time the time for which the current was passing through them, half an hour, one hour, two hours, isn't it? Yeah. And it is joules. Okay, there. Whereas power, power is nothing but H, you get this T divided by T. Okay, that means power is nothing but I square R. So H is joules divided by T is second. Power is joules per second. Joules per second is also called as what? Short, short unit, converted. Like now they say, uh, force is equal to mass into acceleration. Mass is kg, acceleration is meter per second square. Kg meter per second square are the units of force, they call it Newton. Isn't it? You yeah. all, all the time will not say force is 25 kg meter per second square. You say force is 25 Newton or time. Isn't it? Like that joules per second has been designated the unit what? It's all the names of scientists. Okay. So who's what? Joules per second. No, no, no. Um, who is what named after? Scientists. What, what, what is the name of a scientist, the unit? No, 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 I got that. What's the name before what? Ah, the scientist's name. Yeah, huh? the scientist's name. Uh, James Watt, I think, one minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no problem. I know Newton. James uh, Watt, full name. It's a good question. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's James Watt. I looked James Watt, you know? Yeah, I looked it up. It's James. We checked it. Even I was also trying to check. Newton is Isaac Newton. <laughs> that I don't think anyone would know. <laughs> yeah, this is James Watt. Okay. You have many, many scientists who have done work in that field. Radioactivity is named out of Curie. Um, then Becquerel. Uh, many units are named after scientists. Okay. Yes. This is the one. And then what else did we discuss? Then we discussed this important thing. V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. The voltage drop across resistance in series is given by this formula. Whereas when you take it in parallel, the voltage drop across a parallel resistance will always be the same. That means if this, this unit is in parallel, no? Okay, that means whatever is the, supposing you connect one voltmeter here, supposing you connect this voltmeter here, V1 and V2 will be the same, irrespective of the value of the resistances. You got that, no? Yes. Okay, one trick question for you here. See here. Supposing I have a battery, I have a source, and then I have this fellow, and then I have this fellow. And supposing this is 100 and this is 30, I'm giving you 30 means the potential difference across the resistance R1 is 30 volt. Okay. Can you tell me what will be the potential difference across R2? There's nothing to, uh, I mean, you, you don't need to calculate it because I'm not giving you the values of R1, R2, and R3, okay? But yes, I am telling you that uh, across R1, 30 volts uh, is the potential difference. I want you to tell you the reading of uh, V1. So V1 will also be... Don't worry, I'm not, don't get uh, stressed. Let's go slowly, no need to rush. The minute we rush our thinking process, no dear, uh, then we will not learn well. All schools are doing that. I'll ask you a different question, okay? It will lead you to this one. Supposing I say, this is 100 volt, okay? And this fellow is R1, this fellow is R2. And if I say 30 volts is the potential drop across R1. And if I ask you, what is the potential drop across R2, V1, what will you say? So if R1 and R2 are, have the same resistance, then V1 will also be 30 volts. R1 and R2 are not the same. Then it would be uh, 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. No, da. Listen, this is voltage, no? Yeah. These are two resistances in series, no? 
what is the thing which we discussed about voltage drops when resistances are connected in series? Can you refer to your notes? How is voltage distribution taking place when resistances are in series? Uh, whenever we have a resistance in a circuit, there is a voltage drop across it. Okay. So V1, V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Whatever, isn't it? So yeah. here you have two resistances. Yeah. And a one drop I have already told, is it possible for you to calculate V1? Uh, so it would be 100 equals 30 plus X, that's and then you it, interchange it. it that's it, my child. Okay. 100 is equal to, that is V is equal to, see that's what Sana, never ever get flustered when a question is asked. Pause. Always, you know, you should not mind where you are, or who is or looking at you, the fact that this session is being recorded, does it, you don't mind. You just say, I need some time, let me think. And if there is something that is, you feel you need to ask the question, for you to come out with an answer, ask that question. Is yes. it okay? Don't be under pressure to give the answer. Always give yourself the space and time to think. Okay, that's the biggest favor you're doing yourself, okay? Yes, sir. So, so it would be V, v is equal to V1 plus V2 we said. These are the voltage drop across each of these resistances. That is what we are going to measure here, isn't it? This yeah. one I have already told. So one is 100 30. equals 30 plus X. Uh, so it would be 30 plus X equals 100. 70. So X equals 70. 70. That means this fellow will read 70. Correct? Huh? Yeah. Yes. Now you, from this understanding, you come above. Okay. Now you look, I have already told you this is 30, right? Then think now. Um, so, because it's parallel V1, oh, no, wait. If, it's, if you need any input, ask. Something which is bothering, preventing you from answering, ask that, I'll give you the input. So, is there a voltage above, so is there the V2 symbol above R3 also? Or no? Do you think that is uh, uh, pertinent? What did you learn about um, voltage across parallel circuits? If you V1 is also V1 is equal to V2. Isn't it? So this fellow and this fellow are one and the same. I don't need to tell you that this is V1. Correct? Yeah. Huh? Huh? yeah. Okay, supposing this is, you know that this is V1, this is also V1. I'm asking you to tell me what that V1 is. Uh, it would be 70, right? It is 70. Okay, the reason is, you say, boss, we know our, th this fellow and this fellow will be maybe different resistances but their voltage drop is going to be the same, okay? That means between this point, before the branching out happened, I'll call this point A, I'll call this point B, okay? These two fellows together can be thought of as one resistance, no? We know that R effective thingy, right? R1 plus R2 uh, can be thought of as one resistance, which has an effective resistance of, 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2, isn't it? Correct now? Yeah. Okay, so that means this can this circuit can be thought of as one R1 fellow is there and he is having 30 volts across him 
and R2 and R3 together is some R effective, what will be the voltage across this? That is what we are trying to find out. We are able to understand here, no? Means these two, I made it into one. Okay, and then I use that uh, series. Now I know R1 and R effective, what kind of uh, connection they are in. They are in series, right? Isn't it? That means if R1 is uh, dropping 30, RE will drop 70, isn't it? And then you say, hey, if point A and point B, between these two points, it is 70 volt is the drop. That drop will be there across R2 and that same drop will be there across R3 as well. That means both of these will be 70, 70. You're a little confused somewhere, Sana. I can see it in your face. No, I understood it, but then when I see a problem, I get really flustered. I don't know. No, don't I worry. Understand. That's see, because then I can now I will confuse you further. Okay. Now I will say this is one, whereas there are two. And I'm going to tell you 30 volts, you have 30 volts went off here. Between these two points is 70 now. There you go. This is 70. Now, what about this? What about this? Are they going to be same or different? So the one on top will be 70. Beautiful. And then the one below will be 35. That we have to, it depends. It depends on the values of this fellow and this fellow. Yeah. Because here they are in series, isn't it? So together they will be 70, but in series they will be split. This will be V1, this will be V2, V1 plus V2 together will be 70. 70. Yeah. Is it okay? Please yeah. make a note. Please make a note of this question. Okay. And for answering this question, this is the first step. You say that R2. So I already wrote it down. You wrote it down. Yeah. Then this is the second step. And from there comes this kind of question where, you know, you have been given some fellows in front and you are able to calculate the potential drop across them. And then you are given a parallel combination. Okay. So in this parallel combination, you are able to make this whole thing as one. And using the series fellow, you can say what is that V2 is equal to V minus of V1, okay? Or V3 is equal to V minus of V1 plus V2. You are able to find out between these points across this parallel circuit, find out. And then what you come, you say that array in one limb, if there are more fellows within the parallel circuit, then they once again observe the series rule. Okay. One minute, Amma. Yeah, sure. Ah, Chaluma. Yes, yes, tell me. Yeah, bye. Hey, Sana, uh, after when should I teach you? So class usually ends at 8.30. 8.30, we have time, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you able to understand this, Sana? Yes, I am. Okay, good. I will make you do the numericals around this. I'll give you worksheet and all that stuff, okay? Uh, don't try to be fast. Just because you're the only person, we can go slow. Digest the information, okay? Yeah. Now, what I will do, no? <clears throat> I have taught you the concepts. Now we will go to doing simple numericals, okay?
right? This is a simple circuit. Can you just talk to me about this circuit? Um, yes. So the resistances are given, the overall uh, voltage is given, and V1 and V2 need to be found. What do you uh, what do you think about uh, these resistances? Are they in series? Or are they in parallel? It's a series. Okay. That is an important information you have to infer, right? Just because these instruments are there, just block them out from your mind. They are connected the way they are supposed to be connected. Okay, this and this are in connected in series. Okay, right. So I am supposed to find V1 and V2. What is the relationship between V, B, V1, and V2 in series? Um, all of them have to be equal. V is equal to, not all of them have to be equal. The overall supply, the source is equal to the algebraic sum of the individual voltage drops. V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. If V3, R3 is there, isn't it? Yeah, so but there's no V3 in the sum, right? That's all. V3 is not there, so V is equal to V1 plus V2. Correct, Nama? Shana? Huh. So, um, either my internet or your internet was bad, so I couldn't hear you after you said V1 plus V2. Huh. So, we don't have a V3, so yeah. we'll remove it off. If there was one more resistance, it would have been V1 plus V2 plus V3. Yeah. As many resistance, so many potential drops, right? Yeah. So, these are the things that we are able to uh, infer. We, are, we, we need to use make use of these fellows, okay? Now the question is, how do I calculate V1? Can you think about and tell me how to calculate V1? What is V1 equal to in fact? So, because V is 24. Yes. Oh, but we can't substitute the value. I am not being fair with you because though I have told you the Ohm's law, V is equal to I into R, isn't it? If I were to, if I, if I ask you, Sana, can you help me calculate the current in the circuit? You would have been able to do it, no? Uh, it would be 12. Very good. Because you know that this is 24, effective resistance is 10 plus 2, 24 by 12 is equal to? Two, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what you said? No, I said uh, I just added the resistances. I ah, just said twelve. I added the resistances. Effective resistance is twelve. Current is nothing but uh, V by R, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That means it is twenty-four by twelve. It is two. Okay. This this is what we have done so far. But I did not tell you that yeah, if you want to calculate the voltage drop across this resistance, you have to use the same formula V is equal to IR. Okay. But here what you do is you, you have to first calculate the current flowing through the resistance. Okay. Step number one. What is the current through R1? Okay, I am very carefully using the words current through R1 because what if they are parallel, right? 
parallel circuit may i can't guarantee that both limbs will carry the same current right so this can be something a this can be b in a series circuit of course same current is flowing okay but when you want to calculate v you have to first find out what is the current through that specific resistance okay and second thing once you have that you say potential drop across r1 is nothing but v1 is equal to i into r1 is it okay so this is r1 i am separately taking and showing you see this is r1 is equal to 10 ohms what is the current flowing through this a hey bro this is a series circuit so 2 amps will flow through this i is equal to 2 okay i have i i have r1 or you can say i1 also if you wish then v1 is going to be i1 into r1 how much is that Two into ten, so two into 20. ten is nothing but twenty. So, can you help me find V two? Yeah. Um. So you use the formula V equals V one plus V two. Very good. So it will be twenty four plus twenty equals X, and then you substitute it and find. Yeah, you will get V two as. I'm doing it one sec. Hmm. Four, so very good. Okay, or you could have done the same thing. You could have said you you did a very good thing by using your knowledge. V is equal to V one plus V two, or alternatively, you could have drawn this resistance here. Hey, what is this fellow da? This fellow is two ohms. How much current is passing through it? This these two guys are in series. So if two ohms is uh, two amp amps, two ampere is passing through it. Two ampere will also pass through me. What is my voltage drop going to be? V two is going to be I two into R two. I use I two just because I want to be careful because the current flows will may be different. Here I two is equal to two. Two into two is equal to four. So you can use this formula also to calculate it, or you can use your knowledge, right? Is it okay, ma? Because what if there were three? Then you could not have calculated this as four, right? You would have had to calculate it using this method. Is it all right? Yes, one second. Yeah. Yes, sir. Understood this now? This much... Uh, is uh, good. See, there's one more. Uh, do you need a break? No, sir. No, okay. This last one, which I'm going to talk to you, no, take it a little slow, okay?
Um, so V2 will be 24 itself. Sorry, ma. V2 will be 24. Uh, 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 uh. Take it slow. See, that is one of the things. See, these are not the only uh, elements of this. You have this fellow also, no? And this fellow is in series with these guys in parallel. This guy is one block. This block and this fellow are in series. Are you able to follow this mark? Yeah. So whenever a parallel is given, no? In the first instance, simplify this fellow and think of him as one effective resistance. This entire block in your mind. Just for you to get the logic Think of it like this. I will understand this here. This block, which contains this three ohm, which is in parallel to two ohms and four ohms in series, this entire block I have replaced in with R effective. That means this six ohms fellow and this these two are in series. Okay, so what are you supposed to find? You are supposed to find V2 and V3. Isn't it? How would you approach it? Take it slow. Don't no need for you to give a big bang answer. One by one, let's work together. So, so you to find V3, you need to do two ohms plus four ohms. Take it slow. Because now you know that, all right, this is 24 volt. Okay, what did I first tell you? I first told you that in order to find the voltage drop, I need to calculate current in the circuit, isn't it? Step number one. Hmm? So you have to find the current in the circuit. You know that it is not just this red block, which is parallel with 24, right? In which case, if that were the case, na, supposing only this red block is there, that means the three ohm fellow along with two ohm fellow and four ohm fellow. I would be yeah. this. You yeah. no? if, yeah. if, if it were this case, then you are 100% right in telling that this 24 will appear here. This 24 will appear here. It is right. Right. But now this block is not directly connected in parallel with 24. There is this guy also coming into picture. You're able to understand, no? Okay. Yes. So, the, so it is not this case. It is this case. So what will you do? What shall we do? Uh, because so current's formula is I equals V by R. Hmm. So V is 24 mm -hmm. and R is 6. R is 6, sir. Yeah. How is R 6, sir? Ah, see this. This fellow is not by himself, no. He has all these resistance also connected with him. Yeah. Okay. That means what we have to do is we have to calculate this R effective. Remember yesterday we did that, we broke it down into steps and then we finally found the R effective of the entire circuit. You remember this? 
See, first is you think of this fellow. Are you able to see my cursor, Sana? You think yeah. of this fellow as a block. You take him. Then you recognize that these two are in series. You join them together and you get him. So it's a three-step process. Is it okay? Step number one is finding the R effective for this fellow, this block. Step number two is joining these two fellows and finding the R effective. Then step number three is to find the current by using the formula V is equal to uh, I is equal to V by R. Okay. So first tell me the R effective for this block. So would it be 1 by R, 1 plus 1 by R, 2 plus 1 by R, 3? Okay, so we will do that, okay? So um, what I'm going to do, I will open some other window, okay? Just hold on a minute. I can't have two instances of that. So I'm just using off this fellow. So three, two, four. Is this what we have? The block? Yes, sir. Okay. So these two and four, are they in series? Yeah. Can they be joined together? Yes. And we will do a mini R effective for this fellow. What will that be now? Three and? A six. Very good. Now these three and six are in parallel. Yeah. Can we do an R effective for these two fellows? Yes. One by three plus one by six. How much is that? Uh, three by... Six plus one, seven by six, no? Seven by six, yeah. So what is R effective? Seven by six. Six by seven. This is one by R, no? Oh, yeah. So R effective is 6 by 7. That means from here, we've converted this into one block R effective 6 by 7. Is it okay? Yeah. Now we look back and we say, oh, this fellow, this fellow, this fellow, all of that we have considered and we found this fellow, right? Yeah. That means this guy and this gentleman are in series, correct? Huh? Yes. This oh, okay. Is, this is six, and this one now is six by seven. Six by seven. How do we handle them? We add them up. Correct, now? Yeah. How much? Um, 6.85. Oh, 6 plus 6 by 7 is 48 by 7. Okay. The U to the LCM. Uh, so this is 48 by 7 now. So from here, we came here. 
from here, we came here, from here, we have simplified and got this one, final, isn't it? So now are we in a position to calculate current? What yeah. shall we do for that? You are in mute. Oh, okay, sorry. Because current is V by R. V is equal do... to I into R. I is equal to V by R. V is how much? 24. Now you can take 24. Because see for this fellow, this is the 48 by 7. Now, for 48 by 7, only this V is there. So I can use 24 volt now. Divide by 48 five. by 7. Or 6.85. Uh, one small input for you. IG folks, they punch the calculators. Okay. Yeah. ICSC, CBSC folks, they work with fractions because they can't use calculators. Okay. Yeah. So if you see that, if I say R is 48 by 7, 24 divided by 48 by 7, I can cut this. And without calculators, I can say 3.5. Yeah. 7 by 2 is 3.5. Okay. I try a little bit working with fractions. It is not okay, mandatory so. that you do, but your arithmetic improves. Yeah. Okay. So that means now what happens is we have this array with all this, I'm able to calculate this. This is seven by two ampere is coming here. Is it okay? Okay. First is we calculated current. All right. Yes, sir. Hold on. Are all sums going to be like this? Um, see, because these guys are asking you to learn about electronics, I don't know what level they are going to eat your head. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is he not telling us that... seriously. This is the in, this is required for tenth. This is what I teach for tenth. Okay. Okay, but they are asking you to learn about diodes and all that. I'm a little scared. I don't want you to be underprepared. Yeah. yeah. Okay, to that, this is the last thing. The other one, uh, just two in series and uh, two in parallel is easy. This is one step above I'm taking you. Yeah, no, so that's good. Okay, because, uh, really happy, was, okay? Yeah, no, because he was telling us that the tenth grade, the current 10th graders who just wrote their exams were solving neat level questions or something like that. Neat level questions, sir. Yeah, I have no idea if you was... Don't worry, Ma. See, I'll tell you, Sana, I've been doing this for seven, eight years now. Okay. Yeah. I teach people to appear for IIT mains, need all kinds of exams they have done, and they are successfully placed in different good colleges, medical schools and colleges. PES, BMS, uh, Vellore Institute of Technology, Bits Pilani, all, uh, many children are there in this. I know what I'm talking about. Don't yes. feel, just because the teacher is there in front of you, he says neat level and all, no? He's just trying to uh, gain some brownie points and elevate himself. Don't get flustered, okay? Yes. You, you, what you should do is focus. Focus on what is being taught. Learn it well. Yes. Okay? And uh, develop a trust. And uh, you, you, if you have any doubts, ask the questions. That's all you need to do, okay? So, yes. Cal calculate the current all these are very simple because uh, you know it seems new to you know a little bit but break it down into steps think logic uh, chronologically you will get it okay yeah no, but once i broke it down and did the parallel series thing it was much easier yes that is the way it is to be done actually okay okay calculate the current we have done how much did we get we got it as 3.5 ampere, isn't it? Yes. So I will redraw the circuit here for us. Help me with the values, okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, uh, this fellow was how much? Six, six huh? ohms. Six. This fellow? 
थ्री टू फोर दैट वॉज वी टू द थ्री ओम्स वुड बी वी टू फोर ओम्स वॉज वी थ्री एंड वोल्टेज वॉज ट्वेंटी फोर Hmm. <clears throat> so what is the next step? First step is calculate current done. Remember, we have to find the voltage drops. Means we need this fellow, and we need this fellow. Voltage drop. And we also know that this fellow was reduced to this form. Uh, v equals v one plus v two plus v three. Ah, uh, isn't it? So this this is R effective now. What is this R effective which we got? Six by seven, isn't it? So this was reduced to this one. Only then we could calculate the current seven by two, isn't it? So in the back of our minds we have this readily available with us. Correct? Ah. Uh? So now, what is what is it that you will do? Tell me. Oh, we do v equals v one plus v two plus v three. Okay, that means you say that yeah. Now that I have current, I can find out the uh, voltage drop across this six ohm resistor. Correct or not? And I will use the formula. What is the formula to use for finding that? We did this in the previous case. We'll say v one is equal to i one into r one. Is it okay? Yeah. That means what is the current A resistor? What is the current that is flowing through you? Three point five. Oh, that means the voltage drop across you is V one is equal to current through you multiplied by the resistance. Is it okay? Okay. That means you can say find voltage drop. Across six ohm resistor, correct? Yeah, Maybe twenty one. V one is twenty one. Very good. Six into V1. seven by two, which, as you rightly said, is twenty one volts. Okay. Next, what is the step three? Because see, you are logically proceeding now, and it will all depend on the circuit which is given to you. But always finding the current is the first step, and then if any series fellows are there, finding out the voltage drop across them is the next step. Okay. So we now have V one. V one is equal to twenty one. What will you do now? Uh, because so because it becomes a parallel circuit. Hmm. You have to use the parallel circuit formula. Right. Okay. See, listen. 
So this is 6 ohm, this is 6 by 7 ohm. These two guys are in series, na? Yes. Okay, and we know that this 6 by 7 is nothing but this block. This entire block, the parallel block, that parallel block is what is this 6 by 7? Are you able to see this? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, but this this block and this 6 ohm are in series, isn't it? Yes. This parallel block whose effective resistance is 6 by 7 and this 6 ohm, they are in series, isn't it? So what we can now do in step number 3 is find voltage across parallel block. Are you with me, ma? And what would that be? What is the concept we have to use there? V1 equals V2 equals V plus V. Ah, see, you, see, this one, when you have a series now, always say V is equal to V1 plus V2. Okay, so I know what is V121. My V2 is going to be 24 minus 21. Is it okay? Are you getting it, ma? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what we are doing is across this parallel block, I have found out. So that means this one. Supposing I have entry point into this flow. This is the exit point. This point I will say A, this point I will say B. That means if I connect a voltmeter across this entire block, it will read three volts for me. Is it okay? Right. Yeah. Now comes step number four, because we are supposed to find out what is V2 and V3, isn't it? That means now we are zooming into this parallel block. Isn't it? Parallel block 6 by 7, we are now zooming in as 3. Huh? So what will you do here? Hold on. I able to understand till here, this is what we have achieved. Right? What will you do next? Once again, you will remember that array, this parallel block was like this. This was three, this was six, isn't it? Because these, these being two individual resistances is blocking our mind. But if you think of them as one, this is limb number one and this limb number two, limb number two has only one resistance. If supposing we picture it that way, then immediately what jumps to our mind? 
Uh, because it's a parallel circuit, V2 will also be equal to 3 volts. Isn't it? So we are not interested in 6 right now. We are interested to say that, all right, this is a parallel block. If you're telling between these two points, it is 3 volts. Immediately, I know this is going to be 3 volts, right? So you say V2 is equal to 3 volts. This is 3 ohms, this is 3 volt, okay? And we also say that here, I don't know about drop across each of you, but together I know the drop is going to be 3 volts, correct now? Yes, sir. Together it is going to be 3 volts, do you agree? Yeah. Now one second you go to series. You say, boss, you are 6 volts. This is the tricky part, okay? Uh, sorry. Look at this carefully. This is 6 ohms, right? And you are telling that the voltage drop across them is 3 volt. That means, what can you say for the current that is flowing through this slip? You're able to understand? Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, current is V by R. Correct. V is equal to I into R. We make use of that. And we say, yeah, across this 6, I already found out V. Okay, and I know that this 2 and 4 is nothing but 6 ohms. That means with this, I will be able to find out the current that is going through this limb. And that will be equal to V by R. That is nothing but 3 divided by 6. That is half ampere. Two. 1 by 2. Okay, this is how you, you have to calculate the current which is going to each of these limbs. Okay, because from outside, you know it is 3.5. Okay, that is getting distributed. Now you know as half on one side and three on the other. I would understand. And with now this half, it things become easy because this half will go through this and the same half will go through this also. Okay, and now you zoom, zoom out and say, I have to now find across this fellow. Isn't it? What will you do? Uh, you have to find the current again. Current will not, because this is in series. Series my current will not split. Whatever current passes through this will have to pass through this. Isn't it? That we have found out to be half. Yeah, then it'll be. Uh, we need we need to find voltage, right? Yes, very good. Okay, so it'll be V equals uh, half into two, and V equals half into four. Uh, but, half into two, we didn't want. We only want this fellow, isn't it? So we will say very good, Sana. So we will say, yeah, I I don't know the individual, the actual voltage here. I will use the formula. V3 is equal to I3 into R3, whatever this, this is 4. And I know this is half and this is 4. That means this is 2 volts. That means this fellow is 2 volts. Okay, that means this fellow would be 1 volt because these two are in series. They have yeah. to be V1 plus V2 types. Yeah. Okay, so if you say this is 2, I know this is 1. Together, this is 3. And this 3 and this 3 are in parallel. So it is matching. Okay. You understood, no? Yes, yes. So always remember uh, breaking them, combining them into 1, finding I. Okay, let me just quickly take you across the steps. Okay. And, uh, you know, because we went deep down, now we will zoom out and look at it. Huh? And Sana, why don't you tell me how to do it? Uh, okay, so step one, you have to calculate the current of the... Mm -hmm. So you have, yeah. 
So you have to calculate the current by combining the resistances yeah. if possible. If possible, like you will have to. So uh, like if it's a series, then only you can, right? Yeah. So yeah. what I'm saying is step the highest level goal in step one is to find the current in the circuit. You want to calculate this fellow. Okay. So that means that will require you to calculate the effective resistances. That is like you want to find current in one, but then you have to do 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. What is this 1.1? 1 .1? You have to find effective resistances in one block. Then you have to combine it. You have to find something else. Then you have to find something else. Okay. That means to find the current, the step number one will require you to find the effective resistance of the entire circuit. Correct? No? Yeah. Once you find the effective resistance of the entire circuit, you use the overall voltage given and you use V is equal to IR and you will be able to find the current of the circuit. Step number one is achieved. Correct, huh? Yes. If you want, I will pause and make a note of this. No, I did, I did. You did, no? And when you're doing this step one, you have got the in-between equivalent diagrams. Okay, this is diagram number one. You keep it aside. You've got diagram number two. You, you've added these two, you've got diagram number, diagram number two. Keep it aside. Okay, then what did you do? After you calculated this, what did you do? We had to calculate the voltage drop at six ohms so that we could yes. continue with the rest of the problem. Yes, okay. So that is, you're telling, Aray, at the end of it, I will be able to make all of you as if you are in series and you are doing switch distribution. You have to distribute the voltages across the series elements. Okay. So in step two, you are identifying the elements in series. Identify elements means resistances in series and you are trying to do the voltage distribution across them using the formula V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Isn't it? So you could find out V1 by that method, 6 into uh, 7 by 2, 21, right? Yeah. Then what you did, not, you not only found this to be 21, across this block, you are able to find it out to be 3. So you found this to be 21. That means in this block, you got this as 3. Correct, now. And then you're looking at the block, you're zooming into the block now. You know, outside it is three, then you zoom into the block. And within the block, if there is only, it, you, you look at each of the limbs. In limb number one, you had only one resistance. So you know, immediately, whatever is outside the block, parallel block, that same voltage will be here. So this is going to be three, isn't it? And then you study the other limb. In the other limb, you say there are two resistances. You cannot make the mistake of saying here also it will be three, here also it will be three, then it will be wrong. Okay. So here you have to say, hey, I have I have a diagram where these two resistances are combined and I have a R effective ready available with me. How much is that? This fellow is six. Okay. Then you say, I know if this is three, this is also three, but across the six fellow then I will be able to find out the current in the parallel limb. Okay, so when you're zooming into the parallel block and if you are having a limb that contains series resistance, then you have to find the current once again into the limb. Once you find the current in the limb, then your job is done. You can multiply that current along with the resistance and you can find V3. Right, ma'am? Okay, I think your head is now quite hot. Okay, just uh, make a good note of this. And, uh, you know, quickly, without losing time, you take rest tomorrow also, look at it once. Okay, and uh, you, you try to solve some numericals, then it will stay. Otherwise, these concepts will fly away fast. Yes. Okay, you look at your, uh, your page number 196. You have some uh, diagrams, some numericals are there. Try to do that, okay? Okay, sir. And uh, uh, immediately reinforce the knowledge you have learned without forgetting it. All right? Yes. Yeah. Shalom. See you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night.